Good morning. So, <clears throat> first of all, so normally, or periodically if I have time, I'll put a graphic in my stories, on my business page, my other pages, things of that nature. And I realized that I put Wednesday on the graphic. However, it's Tuesday. You know, I really had to go and look at my phone to see what today was. So if you have been um, forgetting the days or maybe seeing the little memes on social media, uh, talking about people not remembering what the day is, it's it's real. It's it's real. I think it's because we're just so out of our our normal um, routine. I'm gonna take a moment if it allows me to to um, to share this out and ask you guys to do the same. You see in the title, breaking the brick walls of limiting beliefs, guys. You guys know I talk about your faith and your belief and how much it has to align with what you're wanting to do in your life or your business. It's like you got to couple those things together. And today I'm going to share with you um, three or four things to think about when it comes to your thinking faith. Your business. on this morning. If you are, you know, building your brand and growing your business, one of the biggest parts of it is going to be your thinking, how you're thinking. And so much of our thinking holds us back from our next. And I want to talk about that with you on this morning and just share a few things for you to think about or to consider, you know, in your process. Because so often, guys, um, and I believe that we should celebrate our small wins. Now, if you get caught up in the phase where you're not celebrating how far along you've come, you tend to start getting kind of hard on yourself, you know? You just got to realize that you are making stride as you move forward. But the question is, is it taking you in the direction that you really desire to head? And if not, what is the, the ultimate thing? What is the real thing that's holding you back? Um, as you come on, if you're on the replay, say hello in the comments. Um, share the broadcast out as you come on this morning. Um, this is something that always touches my heart. Um, every now and then, I'll just have this urge to really come on and talk about <clears throat> belief, uh, hoping to help you along in your process. For many of you as, as entrepreneurs, it's always a new space that we're seemingly embracing or uh, when we think about our goals, our dream and our vision, it's all, always seems so much bigger or further out than we actually find ourselves in the moment. And we stay in that same phase of business building and brand building if we don't check to see if we actually have um, some limiting beliefs that are holding us back. I'm going to do a quick introduction for those of you who have never been on a live broadcast with me before. And you're wondering, who's this lady and what is she talking about? Why is she even qualified to talk to me about my beliefs, um, about building my business and my brand? So I'm Tanya Wilson Cherry, the growth strategist, business coach and mentor to women in business wanting to um, build their brands and profit more wanting to attract their perfect people and grow businesses that fund their lifestyle and not run their lifestyle. I function from a three-point perspective, meaning I focus on abundance mindset. It's the key, guys. Listen, I'm going, I'm going to share some things with you guys in my process and in my journey moving from one phase to the next, but I focus on abundance mindset personal growth and business building. And personal growth is huge because money really isn't obtained from, you know, just chasing the money, right? It's actually about the value that we bring. So money is exchanged in the marketplace based on value and us growing personally and developing more in the area of, of personal growth is how we increase our value. So I teach abundance mindset, personal growth, and of course, some results driven uh, business building strategies. And this morning we're talking about breaking down those brick walls that this thing is not gonna let me move. 
Let me see if, I, if it's something else I can do. Oh, goodness. Mm. Okay, I'm going to ask for your patience one more time here. Okay, let's see if that'll take me to it. So I was thinking about, you know, what are the things that in our thoughts that are holding us back from, from what we really desire? Many of us will go after a portion of what we want or will accept things that aren't really what we desire, maybe because of what it looks like in front of us or um, because we don't really believe that it could be greater. I remember when I made my first uh, $100 online as a coach. Well, $97 actually. I remember that transaction and that transaction alone, you know, it helped to move me to my next space of faith because I already believed that it was possible. And a few reasons why I believed it was possible. One, I'd had examples of people who had done the same thing. So that's, that's huge for you as you're growing your business that you have um, examples of people who have done what it is that you desire to do. And being in a space where you can really not just see them, but be connected to them is huge. And so I'd had an opportunity to have relationships with people who had done it before. I was intentional about even my mentors from afar that I would, you know, follow online. Um, they had done what it was that I desired to do. And the fact that it actually happened, because I had come from, I've been an entrepreneur for about 28 years. And the space of entrepreneurship, well, I don't even know if you really wanted to call it entrepreneurship at that time, but the, the space that I came from as far as working for myself was where I traded my time for that, like I couldn't earn revenue unless I was like in the building, right? And so moving from the space of being able to, you know, just get somebody pay me online um, began to really put me in alignment with the goals and the dreams that I had. I remember when I made my first $97. I remember when I made my first $500 online. I remember when I made my first $1,500 online. And and, and I'm, I don't mean like over a series of days or over a series of months. I mean like I remember when I made my first $1,500 in one sale. I remember when I made my first $2,500 in one sale. Um, I remember when my, my lowest uh, product that I offered or the highest product that I offered was $997. I remember when that moved from $997 to $6,000. Now, what happened in between those particular spaces of growing what I was offering and increasing my cost of my services was belief. It was nothing else. Going from my highest product being $1,000 to 6 k I just took you guys through the journey that I took as a you know business coach online when I made my first sale at $97. I was excited. I was like, okay, this online thing you know does work, although, I believed it prior, as I shared, because I was connected to people who I saw doing it, you know? And so oftentimes the beliefs that we currently have are based on what we've been exposed to prior to that or haven't been exposed to. Does that make sense? So it's like this idea in our mind, but because we, you know, haven't really seen it in operation, it just stays like this thought or this desire you know, that we one day like to happen. I shared how I went from my first sale at 97 and then, you know, moving up to a $500 sale, a $1,500 sale, a $2,500 sale in one transaction. That really helped all of those different times. I really began to remove the limiting beliefs. I began to break down the walls of possibility in my own mind. 
you guys don't hear me. I had to break down the walls of possibility in my own mind because prior to that, um, from the services that I did before, I think in a brick and mortar business, my highest service might have been 1200 at that time in one transaction. And so I at least had that space of thinking, you know, when I got ready to come online, but to actually see it in, in action. One, I had to um, remove, like I said, those beliefs that I had about just how much um, I could earn. Number two, about how much value I was actually bringing in the marketplace. So I had to release my fears. The, the entire coming on the online space, offering my services and products was a matter of releasing my fears. So as I began to be very aware of my thinking, which is so important, guys, like if you're going to break down the walls that are keeping you from building the brand that you actually want to build, um, for many of you, it may be taking your side hustle more seriously and making it a more profitable um, uh, situation for yourself. Whatever your situation may be, you know, taking your expertise and um, turning it into an online course or class, there are normally some fears uh, behind the actions that it actually takes and they come from what we were doing before or what we were currently exposed to. The way you've earned money all your life changes when you step into that new arena. It's, it's a space where you got to release your fears. The next thing I did was I found out what was causing me to fear. I found out what was causing me to fear. And what I mean by that was in me being aware of, just more aware, period, not just of my um, my thinking, but also of what was going on around me. When, when I became, when I decided to be in a space of awareness, I recognized that certain things, certain conversations, certain posts even on social media, certain um, people, were causing me to operate in fear. One of the huge times I saw this, so I was married for about 14 years prior to divorcing about three years ago. And my ex and myself, we thought differently about um, how you earn money. Now, you know, he believed in entrepreneurship too, but more like a side hustle type thing, you know, not as if it would be the thing that would actually take care of you. So our viewpoints on how you earn money were, were varied. And um, the thought that if you didn't like sweat, blood, sweat and tears to do it, um, you really weren't working or you really weren't earning revenue. And so it, there was this constant battle in my mind, um, also in our home, when I wanted to do new things that I believed in or that I was believing for. And so I began to recognize that not only, you know, my ex, but also many of the people who were around me were having these limited conversations. I remember when I was transitioning from owning a brick and mortar service-based business to coming online, you know, there were people who were always saying, well, you know, you always got to keep this thing over here. You know, it, it was just this, um, they really couldn't see the space of possibility. And so their um, opinions or their advice to me was, you got, you have to hold on to this other thing. And I'm not saying that people should just quit their jobs and you know stop doing what they're doing to earn revenue. I think it's super important that before you transition into something else, you found some stability somewhere. You've, you know, looked at what it is that you have going on. That's not everybody's story. Some people just jump, but I think that is the wise thing to do. But however, I could hear the conversations, um, you know, almost pressuring me to not move forward in what it was I knew was possible. Have any of you ever had that happen before? Like you may share your dream or your goal or your vision with someone. And I don't think they're intentionally doing it, but they're talking to you from their space of belief or where they last stopped in the process themselves. And they'll give you all of these warnings 
um, about why maybe what you're doing may not be, you know, the smartest thing to do. And so I had to realize, I had to find out what was causing me to fear. I share with you that much of what was causing me to fear was conversations that were going on around me. It was things that I was watching. It's to the point now where I can hear someone who's operating from a limited space of thinking. Um, the next thing I also had to do, guys, and I'm going to call this burn the ship, right? So there was a captain by the name of Hornan Cortez who arrived in the New World with about 600 men on a ship um, to an island. And upon arrival, he ordered his men to burn the ship. He said, the only way we're going to get out of here is if we defeat the enemy and we're just going to use their transportation in order to leave the island. And sometimes there are times in your life where you have to burn the ship, where you have to say, I have to release and let go of my way of thinking from my past, um, the tools that I was using from my past, many of the crutches that I was using. Because one of the huge things about crutches is sometimes crutches are people who help us financially or um, support us in, in a certain way. And I think that, you know, those things are grace and mercy. And we um, are so blessed when we have that measure of support. I'm not I'm meaning like a, a, a household with a spouse and you guys are working together. I'm not talking about that. But people who are always, you know, doing things for us. I mean, I feel so blessed. Um, my parents have been in a position to do things for me, um, but I had to say in my mind, even though I knew in the back of my head that worst case scenario, I had to burn the ship with all the crutches, right? Because there's this thing other than God, right? There's this thing that transpires when we have crutches. Um, what happens is those crutches never allow us to develop the capacity for what's actually needed at the next level because there is a capacity that's needed for whatever your next level is. There's a flow, there's a momentum, there's a pace, there's a skill set, there's a level of value that you have to be able to bring. And when we have um, crutches in our life, they oftentimes limit us from becoming more. Does, does that make sense to you guys? They often limit us from becoming more. So I had to like remove crutches that were, were in my mind <clears throat> and say, no, you know, I, right, God has given me the power to get wealth and I can make this happen. Um, I had to bet on myself. Now, Limiting beliefs come about when our value, the way we value ourselves, is not in alignment with what's needed for next. Let me give you an example. So I feel that um, struggle is hard. I feel that becoming more is always hard, is also hard. Um, and you just got to make a choice which hard you want to step into, basically. So determining that the, the hard or the challenge that you're willing to do is because you know you deserve what's at the next level. You know you deserve what's you know, past your comfort zone, right? That's when our value steps up and we begin to value who we are so much and to, until we're will, willing to burn the ship. Remember I said burning the ship is sometimes getting rid of some of the beliefs that we had before about the possibility of it all, about how it has to happen or how it used to happen, how we used to make it happen. A lot of, you know, breaking those walls down is about unlearning some things that we, you know, um, thought or believed from our past. So betting on ourselves, and that comes from a space of valuing. It's it's like no, I value myself enough to do the work. I value myself enough to be challenged in this situation, and and be okay with being challenged. 
inside my um, 3D Success, Success Academy, one of the things I share with them are levels of goal setting. And I talk about how most people set goals that they um, are comfortable that they can make. For instance, if you made 100K, then your goal might just be 100K. And you know that's what you'll set your new goal for for the next year. Um, that's one level. We set goals that we're comfortable with. I've already done this before. Maybe I've fallen off a little bit, but I know I can reach this particular goal. So that's what I'm shooting for. And then there's the next level of goal setting is where we set goals where we say, you know, this is a little uncomfortable, um, but, you know, I kind of got some information and, you know, it's a little more clear and I, I believe this is possible. I'm going to set my goal at 120. And then there's the space of, um, you know, a lot of people call it the impossible goal where you go beyond and you really touch down with the goal that you really and truly desire to make happen. And the thing about the impossible goal is if you don't reach that goal, more than likely you've hit the other, you know, levels of goals in the process anyway, because you have to meet them in order to get to the impossible goal. But what has happened is you've increased your capacity because that goal requires a different version of you. It requires a different mindset, a different thought process, a different com community, a different environment. And so um, betting on yourself, I had to bet on myself. I had to say, no, I am worthy of what's at that next level. Um, I'm tired of the level that I'm currently on and I deserve better. Now, that thought process ran through my entire life. Health, relationships, wealth, it went like full circle. It wasn't just, you know, in my business. As I increased how I valued myself, my, my goals changed and it broke down some of those brick walls that I previously had about what was actually possible. Because a lot of times when we are uncomfortable with who we are, or you know, we haven't worked on valuing ourselves at a new level, we often settle in, in every area of our life. And so there has to be something on the inside of you, a belief that says, I deserve more. If you gotta keep telling yourself that all the time, or if you have to question your current situation and say, hey, you know, wait a minute, I no, I, I deserve more and then getting in alignment with that. The next thing I did was I believed the word of God fully. Now, believing it didn't mean that it manifests instantly. Now, some things just like just be happening, okay? But I had to believe like every part. I'm a kingdom entrepreneur if I didn't share that with you earlier. And as I began developing a relationship with God and like really reading the word, I just had to take it at his word and believe it and understand that um, the things that I was applying, the principles that I was applying in my life were all were also breaking down the walls of what I had currently built that was unstable. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense? And so um, I had to believe the word of God fully, like, no, I'm going to continue to sow. No, I am going to continue to tithe. This says diligence makes rich. That means I am going to keep going, right? So just different things that I had to look at certain principles in, in the Bible and just believe it fully all out in my mind. And when I began to do the comparison of how I struggled prior and I, I wouldn't even, I said struggle earlier um, as far as breaking through to the next level, but it's really the, the, the energy and the investment that you make in going to your next level, listen, if you're struggling, you know, and, and when, when I say struggling, I don't even just mean financially, you know, struggling can just be if you're uncomfortable with what's transpiring in your health, your wealth, your finances, your mindset, things of that nature. If you're uncomfortable with that, right, if you know there's a, a new higher version of you waiting to expand and explode, whether it's in your health, wealth, or finances, um, there's energy to both of those and, and you have to choose, right? And so I chose to believe fully the word of God as I applied and implemented those things. And then I, I kind of removed the time frame from things. 
Whereas I was like, man, this is going to take me five years. And I was like, are you going to live five more years? Do you plan on being here on this earth five more years? And my question was yes. And I wanted that next five years to turn out better, um, greater, more purposeful than what was in the past. It was part of the growth track. Um, I had to believe beyond my current situation, which, you know, in a time like we're facing now, that can be difficult. And what often happens with people who had a dream bigger than what they're currently seeing is they will look at what's transpiring right now and lose hope and say, well, let me just go back. I'm, I'm just going to put the dream down for about three, four years. Let me just go back to how I was doing things before, because in my mind, that seemed to be a little more secure. And, um, and I, I'm just not going to focus on the bigger dream that I have right now, but you have to move beyond your, you have to be able to see beyond your current situation and environments. I can't begin to explain to you. I saw a young lady talking about, you know, not watching television as much as she was before and, you know, um, not finding the value in them that she once found before. And, you know, then later I saw her sharing about different programs and things that she's watching on TV. And it's been continuous, like almost every post that I've seen from her since she said she was not going to watch it anymore. It's because we go back to a sense of normalcy or what was a comfort zone or our old habits that never allow us uh, to move into next. Here are some reasons why limiting beliefs continue to reign in people's life. Number one, some people are addicted to struggle. Did you guys know that was possible? To be addicted to struggle? It's kind of like, well, this... This feels like it's going to be easy. This something doesn't feel normal because I've, I've struggled all my life. Or I've been told that if I'm not like beating the pavement, struggling, it's not going to work. And it, it becomes addic an addiction to the process. And so in that process, we sometimes sabotage opportunities. Um, we, we don't believe in opportunities like, you know, in one transaction, you can make $1,500 or $2,500 or $5,000 or $10,000. You know, the, the struggle that we were so accustomed to having, it happens in relationships, right? It happens in toxic, I've been in a toxic relationship before. And when I look back on those years, I'm like, you know, asking myself, what was it? You get addicted to the struggle and then you try to... Um, you know, most of us as women, we're trying to save people, which there's only one person who has that job, and that's Jesus himself. But um, if we aren't doing that thing, which was a struggle, um, anything else feels abnormal. So one of the reasons that we stay inside the realm of our limiting beliefs is because we become addicted to struggle. Number two, um, the, the way we value ourselves, as I said before, is another reason why limiting beliefs begin to overwhelm and consume our lives. Number three, um, the thought that I can't afford it. This is huge because when it comes to investing in your next, and this is how we stay in patterns that we were once in, but when we say the phrase, I can't afford it, um, maybe we're hoarding out of fear, you know, what we have, we have to wonder if the real thought in the back of our mind is that we're not going to ever be able to produce any more income. We got to think about that because in the same breath, we'll still take income or revenue and spend it on things that are not investments, right? So when we're saying the words, I can't afford it, here's one of the things that you want to do. You want to change the question around to say, how can I afford it, right? How can I afford it? Just that conversation that we're having, I see people, I saw a young lady yesterday and my heart, I almost commented, right? But it wasn't my post. Um, and, and when I start seeing things that are bothering me heavily like that, 
I remember what God tells me <laughs> about my time on social media and what my focus needs to be. But some things just pop up while, while you're up there, but limiting social media is huge. But she said, I'm poor. I mean, she just said the word in, in her post. And I, like, I had a hard time saying the word out to you guys because the feeling that there's a feeling that comes down on the inside of you when when you say that. Now, this young lady has um, items and things she sells online or whatever, but just to say the words. And so how you see your situation, how you're speaking about your situation impacts your belief. So imagine if in your mind you are poor, do you ever think that you would do things that would move you in another realm of your wealth, right? Will, will the statement, I can't afford, will that ever change, right? So being mindful of what you say. And um, the number four thought process that normally happens that keep us from breaking down those brick walls of limiting beliefs is saying it's going to be too hard. It's going to be too hard. There is a developmental process that happens when you take on a new challenge. When you challenge yourself to do something outside of your comfort zone, to step into a new realm of possibility. One, you increase your capacity, but second of all, you increase your value. And what people pay for in the marketplace is value. That's what people pay for. So I just wanted to share with you guys some things about breaking down those walls of limiting beliefs, some things I had to do, release my fears, um, find out what was causing me to fear, and then say, hey, you can't be watching that stuff. You can't be listening to that stuff. You can't talk to them. You know, you got to limit when you talk to them. You got to be built up and prepared mentally if you talk to them. Um, there's certain things that I cannot watch not for long periods of time, right? Because it impacts my belief. And when I'm believing greater, it's normally something outside of where I already am. So it's not like I can physically see it, but I can see it in my heart and I can see it in my mind. And everything that comes through that filter of my mind impacts my thought process. It impacts my beliefs and yours. Everything that comes through the filter of your thought process is impacting the decisions that you make, the emotions that you have, the feelings that you have, and they all impact your actions. So I challenge you on today, on today to believe greater. Look at some of the things that we talked about. I released my fears. I found out you know, what was causing me to fear. I bet on myself. I up-leveled how I saw myself and the value that I felt I had, my worth, right? Well, all of us have super worthy, um, you know, God created us. But the value that we place on ourselves, um, I believed in the word of God fully. And then I believe beyond my current situation. I unlearned some of the thoughts that I had about earning revenue, going from a $97 product to a $6,000 product, you know, going from making a $97 sale to a $1,500 sale or $2,500 sale. I had to change what I believed every single time. It impacted what I shared on social media, what I talked about, and it definitely impacted who I attracted into my business. You are your brand. You're attracting people all the time or not attracting people. And a lot of it is based on what you believe. You will not go in environments that will allow you to be challenged and grow if you don't believe it's possible, if you're saying it's too hard, if you're saying I can't afford it, if you're addicted to struggle. Those are some things that really impact our belief and things that we have to work on when we want to break down those brick walls of limiting beliefs. For those of you who are ready to deep dive, go to your next level, work on your destiny, your dollars, your disciplines, we focus on mindset, business strategies, foundational business strategies um, for you to really grow your brand, your business, and your life. I invite you to join us inside 3D Success Academy. Our May enrollment ends in a few days. As of now, you can go to the link. It's at the top of the page. I'll also put it in the comments. Um, we work heavily on mindset. Clients shift tremendously from mindset. One of the reasons why you undercharge, you, you don't price your services properly, it's limiting beliefs. 
they, it's limiting beliefs. That could be the thing that's keeping you from your next. I invite you to join us if you're a woman in business inside 3D Success Academy. And for today, I challenge you to be aware of your thinking all day. Just think about the thoughts that you're having and say, is that a limiting belief that I just had? Let me get rid of that. Let me find things that are going to up-level my faith for what it is that I say that I desire. You guys have a super amazing day.